Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I've got a fun project for you. Take a look at this quilt behind me. Isn't this sweet? This is a great little quilt. The whole reason I made this was because I have a daughter that has a quilt that's made all out of flying geese and I wanted to see actually how many I could make out of one packet of 42 and a half inch strips. So this is the size you get. It's gonna be about 47 by 61. So it's a great size and um, I just, I just really wanted to see how, how many it would make, and so that's why we did this quilt. So the fabric we've used for this is called Rhapsody in Reds by Kay England for Wilmington, and it's just really a fun. One of the reasons I chose this roll for this is because I have just about even numbers of lights and uh, colors. So I wanted to be able to divide that evenly, and I think it just came together so great. You're gonna need some sashing right here. You're gonna need about three quarter of a yard because these are one inch or one and a half inch strips. And then your outer border out here, this is a six inch uh, border. Now this backing, we used what's out here on the border. We used that same fabric on the backing here. I just fell in love with it. It's such a cute print. And we used three and a quarter yards for that. So the first thing you wanna do to get started is you wanna separate your roll into lights and darks. And then I paired a light with a dark like this, and I kept them folded in half so that uh, I can cut two at a time. And then I'm gonna get a light square, a light strip over here. Just like this. So, and, and actually this works for this, this jelly roll because it is, um, because it has even numbers of lights and darks. But if you have a packet of strips that's all colorful and you don't really have lights and darks, you'll actually have to bring in um, some background fabric because you want good contrast on these these little geese. All right, so what I've done is I've stacked them up here. I'm gonna cut off my, my selvage ends right here. And then I'm going to use my little two and a half inch ruler and I'm gonna cut the base of my geese. So it's gonna be a four and a half inch block. So I'm gonna lay, gonna lay this down here longwise and cut my four and a half like this. And this it gives me enough bodies. So two lights and two darks for four geese. So I need two of the two and a half inch squares for each geese. So then we're gonna to have to cut four of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one right here, or two sets is what I mean, and, uh, and this one right here. And this should give us enough for each piece. So let's lay these out and take a look at them. So I have two of the reds and I need two of the lights like this here and here. Basically what I'm doing is I'm keeping them together because I wanna switch them up. And so I'm gonna cut all my blocks, all of these one way and all the other, and then I'm just gonna switch them up. So I want you to look at the quilt for this very reason. Now this right here, see this one has the darks on the outside with the light middle, and I did a whole row of those. This next one has the lights on the outside with the dark mi middle, and I did a whole row of those. And I just went across the quilt like that. So let's, let's make a flying geese so you can see how to do this because this is really fun. All right, first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my two and a half by four and a half rectangle that makes the body of the geese, and I'm gonna choose two of my two and a half inch squares, which are gonna make the squares we put on the sides so that it has that flying geese look. I'm gonna iron them in half like this. You can draw the line or iron. I'm just gonna iron them in half. So remember, these are two and a half, and the rectangle is two and a half by four and a half. All right. Now, I accidentally ironed these going two different directions. You really want to iron it outside in. See, I have this going inside. It's going to be very difficult to sew that. So I'm going to flip this over and iron it the other way. You always want to sew, if you're going to iron the line, you want to sew in the ditch, not on top of the mountain. It just doesn't work as well. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lay this on here like this, and I'm gonna sew right on this pressed line, and then we're gonna trim that off. So we're gonna sew right on the line. Make sure your, your square stays lined up in the corner perfectly. And we're just gonna sew right, right down the side here. Let me turn this a little bit faster. There we go. Now before I do any cutting on my block, I wanna fold it back and make sure that it matches up in that corner. So now I'm just gonna give this a little press and I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna cut off this edge right here, making sure this guy doesn't get caught in there. Just like that. Now I'm gonna add the square to the other side 
and I'm going to line it up in the corner and we're going to sew right across this way just like we did on the other side. So you want your fabrics to cross in the center. That's part of getting a good pill right here. There we go. Straight across, a good seam. And again, I'm going to fold this back to make sure it lines up with my corner. See how, see how clean that is? It's, it's, it keeps the square. That's what we want. So I'll actually trim that off and then press it back. All right. Now this is what, this is what our flying geese looks like. Now, this is a really big part. People have been talking a lot online about how do we not lose this point? This is the beak of our geese right here. And how do we not lose that point? So let's take a closer look at that. So this is the first part of making sure you have a perfect point is that quarter inch overlap. Now on the back, when you turn this over, oh, this is darker fabric. Let me show you on the light one. It's a lot better. So see right here how our gray thread, how it crisscrosses right there. You see that cross? As long as when you sew your seam, you get on this side or seam side, any place this side of that point, you're going to keep your point. So let me show you how these go together. So I'm going to sew this one on here because it's got the light background and I'm making a column of all lights. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these together like this. And so you laid your point side right here to the body side of this one right here. And you just lay it on there like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sew a quarter of an inch right along here and just catch it the other side of where these threads cross. The threads crossing is the key. So let's go ahead and sew a quarter of an inch right there. Let's see, watch that. There we go. All right. Now let's look at where I sewed that. So my, actually my quarter of an inch looks a little bit scant, but I'm right on that side of the point. So when we open this up, look at that. You've got your perfect point. Here, let me iron this for you. I'm going to set my seam and iron this back. So this is the point we're talking about right here. And that is pretty dang perfect. That's good. So just remember, wherever your threads cross, you want to go to the seam side of that. Now, truth be told, I have sewn my seam just a little bit like this so I could catch that point because when it quilts, it's all going to be fine. But, um, you know, do what you feel comfortable with. But whenever you have two threads that cross, that's what you want to watch for if you want to keep your points. So now that we've mastered the point, we're ready to start assembling our quilt. And we're going to start putting these in long rows together, one after the other. And so let's just sew a couple of these on here. And I have this one right here and this has, I'm matching it up with my light body and my dark squares on the top. And so again, I'm just going to lay this on here like this. I'm going to flip this over so that I can, I make sure that I don't cut off my point. And we just sew straight across. And then we're going to press it open and see how we did on that point because we were watching. All right, look at that. That's a pretty good point right there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to assemble these into columns. There are seven columns on this quilt and there's 24 in each column. And once you get your column done, you're going to add your sashing. Now our sashing is a one and a half inch strip right here. And I'm going to trim off my selvages on this. And I'm going to show you the trick of putting on sashing and this works for borders too so that you can uh, you can put it on without your borders or your sashing getting rumply at all. The trick for this is once you get your whole column done you're going to lay your blocks down next to the feed dogs right here and you're going to lay your sashing on top. Always put your sashing on top and then it won't it won't wave, it won't ruffle up. Because your feed dogs, which are the, the little things down here on the bottom of your machine that move the material through, they move more material than the top. So if you have your, if you have your little sashing on the bottom, it's gonna move more fabric through and then it's gonna end up with a little bit of a wave in it. So I keep kind of a, not a pull, but a nice firm hold on my sashing. And I just sew down the side like this. 
And of course, your column will be much longer than mine. And uh, I'm just going to take this over here and we're going to press it so that you can see what we did here. So set your seam and then roll it back. And then your sashing, look at that, it will lay nice and flat like that. And then you're just going to do the same thing. Even when you add this next column to it, you're going to flip this over and you'll probably start from the other end. I would start from this end and sew this way because I like the bulk of my quilt to be on the outside of my foot to make sure that the sashing stays on top. That's why I would do that. My sashing needs to always be on the top. If we put this side over like this and sew it down and this is on the bottom, that side's going to be ruffly. So we want to make sure that we don't do it. Then you're going to add your six and a half inch or your six inch borders out here. And it just makes a great little quilt. Now the cool thing about pre-cuts that is that if you want this bigger, you're just going to use two rolls and it's going to get bigger and bigger very quickly. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on Fancy Flight from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.